，是的。那么接下来，我们来邀请到亚东工业气体股份有限公司工业大型工业及医疗保健事业群总经理。Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Air Liquid Far Eastern Limited and General Manager, Industrial Large Industries and Healthcare. Let's welcome Mr. Eric Moda. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to have been represent Ahlikid to share uh, not only our plans but also our actions in helping decarbonizing the planet through some of the initiatives we are already putting in place for the wild, not only on the home care but on the health care uh, sector, but uh, leveraging our position also on the health care to bring what we do already in the industry. So first, the question is. What do we need to, to act now? Uh, because although many of the companies and the countries are committing to 2050 carbon neutrality, if you don't act now, we cannot reach those goals in 2050. So we, have, we are leaving those examples of impacts of the climate change already. Uh, uh, we can face many floods in, in, in many cities. Some cities have risk of disappearing. So last year we could fire many wildfires out of control in a row in California, in Brazil, in, the, in Australia. And uh, we lived that in Taiwan. Uh, last year, uh, uh, one of the worst uh, water drought we faced, especially on the central South Taiwan, which right away impacted the, po the population, but also affect, affecting the industries. So the signs of the climate change, not, not to mention the, 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 the snowfall in, in, in Texas, a quite a warm uh, uh, state. So if you don't take the actions, we are living in this situation already, but if you don't take the actions now, we're gonna get worse. But why is that happening? The key impact of those uh, global warming and climate change is most linked to the greenhouse gases. So we have a, a brief illustration on the impact of those greenhouse gases. The average temperature of the Earth's surface is increasing, but why? It's due to a natural phenomenon, the greenhouse effect. The Earth's surface reflects some of the radiation it receives from the sun. Some gases, such as CO2, methane, or nitrous oxide, retain some of this infrared radiation, which warms the atmosphere. That's the greenhouse effect. Without these greenhouse gases, also known as GHGs, the average temperature on Earth would be minus 18 degrees Celsius. A balanced carbon emission absorption cycle helps to maintain a viable temperature on the Earth's surface. However, since the industrial era, the combustion of fossil fuels has increased significantly to meet growing energy needs in transport, industrial processes, and intensive agriculture. This combustion has generated significant GHG emissions whose increased concentration in the atmosphere has unbalanced the carbon cycle. The consequences are numerous and systemic. Temperature and water cycles change, ocean levels rise, water acidifies, Climate events become more severe. All have geopolitical, social, and economic impacts. At current rates, scientists have calculated that by 2050, the negative effects will be irreversible. It is essential to act quickly and collectively on GHG emissions. Thanks to their innovative technologies, companies have a major role to play in the fight against climate change. Air Liquide is committed to reducing its environmental footprint, developing with its customers low-carbon solutions for the industry, and building new ecosystems for a low-carbon society. So, as described, the greenhouse gases are important, but we are suffering with an unbalanced situation between generation and absorption. So, enhancing and using technology to decarbonize those assets, lowering the impact of those greenhouse gases, will enable that you can reach safely, uh, uh, the world will be safer in 2050. So to, to draft that journey of decarbonization of assets, our assets and also our customers' assets, uh, we started with the mapping in details, which we illustrate now on our existing facilities. As a result of their activities, Companies emit greenhouse gases called GHGs. Air Liquide, like all companies with more than 500 employees in France, reports its emissions every year. How do we do it? 
we refer to the GHG Protocols Reference System, which lists the GHGs to be taken into account. Carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorocarbons, and sulfur exafluoride. These emissions are reported in CO2 equivalent. In fact, each GHG has a corresponding global warming potential known as the GWP. This compares the contribution of a GHG to CO2. For example, the GWP of methane is 30. It has a warming potential 30 times greater than CO2 over 100 years. The emissions reported are divided into three scopes. Scope 1 includes direct emissions coming from our assets or those under our control, mainly SMR, cogeneration units and gas transportation. Scope 2 includes indirect emissions related to the generation of energy such as electricity and heat, which we mainly use for our ASUs. Scope 3 covers 15 categories of indirect emissions, including, for example, purchases of goods and services, employee travel, and the use of products sold by the group. Air Liquide also publishes the emissions avoided by its customers through the use of its products and operational efficiency. For example, when customers use oxygen to produce steel, they consume less energy and less coal than when they use air, thus reducing their CO2 emissions. In the same way, when customers entrust Air Liquide with the production of their gases, they are produced using less energy because the group has a long-standing expertise and adapted solutions. Air Liquide is committed to reducing its environmental footprint, developing low-carbon solutions with its customers for industry and building new ecosystems for a low-carbon society. To make a parallel of those uh, examples of recreation decarbonization, depending on the condition for a hospital example, we can have uh, an on-site oxygen generation instead of uh, liquid transportation, liquid oxygen transportation. For home care patients, we serve more than 1.8 million patients worldwide where they can have the oxygen generation at home or have home medical ventilation, which overall reduces the carbon footprint of the treatment besides bringing some uh, sort of more comfort to the patient and family on their recovery whenever they face uh, chronic uh, pulmonary diseases. This is one of the examples. So by mapping those footprints, what we intend is to identify and prioritize actions and innovation in our assets. So uh, committing to renewable power is one of the examples. Enhancing the technology of the new uh, plants to reduce the specific power consumption, adopting uh, renewable fuels as part of the mix on the transportation. These are one of the examples. By doing so, if you look at the blue box on the sign here, is what we call is an air separation unit that usually provides gases for hospitals. So by sourcing renewable power, the products we source, we supply to the hospitals can be renewable. So through that, we are cascading down the impact of the CO2 uh, emissions on the hospitals, an example. And uh, in all of the other industry sectors, we intend also, and we develop together with the customers, technologies and applications to reduce their CO2 footprint. So these are the ideas. Now we're gonna to switch to the commitments. So uh, under the frame of the new uh, strategic plan we call ADVANCE, uh, by 2025, we're gonna reduce 30% of our absolute emissions, which is one important milestone to reach the carbon neutrality by 2050. And how do we do, are we gonna do that? 50% of our investments will be related to any transi energy transition uh, um, assets and uh, innovation in developing new technologies. So roughly we expect to invest more than 8 billion euros by 2035, uh, which will enable our hydrogen business and uh, technology related to efficiency uh, uh, double uh, in size. And uh, our fleet in the areas where we have a uh, few available and the, the, the assets are, are, are available, especially Europe is going faster on that direction. We intend to have a 20% of renewable fuels by using already natural gas. In some cases, we're even using hydrogen as a fuel to decarbonize the transportation. So bringing out the example of the actions we have already done in Taiwan, um, we, the key three projects we have today, uh, and we are doing those projects. So the first one, 
we are decarbonizing the hydrogen production through adoption of new investment. It's, it's highly linked to the semiconductors industry because it's uh, hydrogen. Um, and uh, we also installed the first carbon capture out of a methanol uh, hydrogen plant in Taoyuan, which is going to be in commission in the end of this year. Those two projects together from 2022 will avoid 42,000 tons of CO2 emission in Taiwan for the same production capacity as we would have in other assets. So the actions that we commit in our roadmap on the long term are already in place and being launched in Taiwan. The last one, but not least important, is the commitment on the converting our energy supply chain from the coal generation that we have today in most of Taiwan through renewable power. And uh, by 2035, we expect to have 50% of our power uh, on the renewables, aligned with the investments we do on expansion of the business, uh, but also uh, sourcing more renewable power in Taiwan to, to feed our source, our, our operations. So moving to the G part of the, of the ESG, which was one of the topics, uh, we shared some of the being a listed company in Paris, we, we have uh, a fully transparent and the strong governance uh, plan. Some of the examples of those uh, diversity and the social commitments we, we share. Uh, by 30, 2025, we expect to have 30% of uh, managers and professionals uh, uh, occupied by women worldwide. In Taiwan, this range is already bigger, it's around 40. Uh, we have equalized the healthcare support for all of our six, six, 66,000 employees worldwide. Uh, there is no, uh, historically, we have some differences depending on the availability in the region, but we have a totally equalized support for our employees. And uh, one of the offers that we intend to further develop and make more accessible through our foundation, we have uh, usually uh, sponsored initiatives to provide oxygen in areas that there is no oxygen available, especially in Africa. And now with the unfortunate scenario of the war in Ukraine, and last month we provided more than 1 million euros in, in social aid and also in oxygen supply for the, for the population requesting supply. And uh, we, we intend also to accelerate and further expand the home care activity, especially after the COVID. We provided a lot of uh, support on the home care recovery of patients who remained with some uh, uh, chronic uh, uh, disease or uh, difficulties in recovery of COVID because through that you can have a much better uh, quality of life for chronic patients on the, on the, on the supply. So just a last slide and a summary. As we mentioned, we intended to decarbonize and we are already decarbonizing the, 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 the supply chain through renewable power, which is one of our main product sources, renewable fuels as well. We have a lot of actions on the biogas production, recovering gas, uh, producing natural gas from waste. Through that, we can decarbonize our main assets. Hence, we can have uh, renewable powers. The codes of uh, Fluxal or Echo Schiller example here are example of on-site product generation that we can have either through hospitals or to industries that instead of transporting quantities of liquid products, we can also have the on-site generation, decarbonizing the full supply chain and also requiring less power consumption. Okay, so uh, this is uh, uh, what we have for, to, to share about our offer. We thank you a lot for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Murda, for the sharing. Sit up. 非常的谢谢 Mr. Mora 带给大家相当清楚的这个解说。那么接下来。